Hello, this is Pseudoname, and I'll be covering how I make destructible environments in Ravenfield. The sky is split into the following parts. Use a Blender to make a destructible object, exporting from Blender and importing into Unity, setting up the destructible object, and optimizing the destructible object. Timestamps will be in the description, so you skip ahead to whatever parts are relevant to your needs. I won't be teaching you how to use Blender. There's tons of guides online and on YouTube to watch and learn from. When making destructible objects, you need at least two models, an undamaged and a damaged version. I like having a damaged version that also has debris that's affected by physics. I use a cell fracture add-on to make the debris. To enable cell fracture, go to Edit, User Preferences, then Add-ons, and search for and enable cell fracture. I'm making a concrete barricade in this video, and the damaged model will have rebar sticking out. I just take the default cube, add loop cuts, then scale it to make the barricade. For the rebar, I duplicate the barricade and slightly scale it down to fit inside the undamaged model. I subdivide the rebar, then inset and delete those faces. I then add a solidify modifier to make it thick and not just a single plane. Once you've made your undamaged model, then would be a good time to texture and do the UVs. I didn't, however, which made the UV of the wrecked and unwrecked barricade to not match. I duplicated the undamaged model again so that I can change it into a damaged version. It's always a good idea to organize your workspace, so I renamed the meshes. I used the knife tool to cut the damaged model and create a chunk that will turn into debris with the cell fracture. Once I'm content with how the damaged version looks, I separate the damaged model from the debris. I fill in the empty faces for the models. I typically try to limit the amount cell fracture generates to around 20. and delete the original debris chunk. For the rebar, it's the same process of using the knife tool and cutting a shape I'm pleased with. For complex models, like rebar, I try to optimize the model by reducing the number of triangles. I delete the faces that the player won't see. But if I'm feeling very lazy, I'll just use limited dissolved and triangulate. It's not the most ideal way to optimize the mesh, but it's what works for me. Here I'm doing the UV and texture work for the model. I should have done it earlier, but hindsight is 2020. Normally, I would use a palette so that all of my models could use the same texture. Using a palette makes the model more optimized since Unity only has to render one material. But I'm not using a palette this time since I'm experimenting with a new style. Shrunken down textures to somewhat emulate the original PlayStation. The concrete and rust were both higher resolution photo scans that I downsized to 32 by 32. I made a tile sheet for those pictures and I'm using it as a texture for the barricade. Exporting simple. Go to File, Export, FBX. I export the model to my Unity Assets folder, so when I launch Unity, Unity has access to the model already. When exporting the model, I recommend enabling Apply Transform. 
and may also be called experimental transform in earlier versions of Blender. I won't be teaching you how to use Unity in this video. Go watch or read other tutorials to learn. Once your model is in your scene, create an empty game object and place it with your models. Name an object destroyed or whatever destroyed thing you're making is. Drag the damaged models to the game object. Then disable the game object. Give your undamaged model the destructible script. It's included by default in the Ravenfield Tools Pack. Set Disable on Death and Enable on Death to 1. Make the Disabled on Death the undamaged model. Make the Enabled on Death the game object. And adjust the other parameters as desired. This last section is only necessary if you don't have debris that is affected by physics. Select your debris and give them rigid body and mesh colliders with convex enabled. Give them a lifetime script. It's your choice how long in seconds the debris stays before it's despawned. If you don't have an animation tab, you can click on the three bars and then go to add tab, then choose animation. To make the despawning more aesthetically pleasing, I made an animation that scales down the object after 5 seconds. The shrinking occurs for 3 seconds. Samples refers to your frame rate. I recommend using one since it's a simple animation, so you don't need more than one frame per second. To make the other debris have the same animation, just drag and drop the animation clip into the other models. Export and test the map. Thanks for watching and don't bother me ever again.